want to start off by, uh, it's a sad day today here in San Jose and the city of Milpitas and um, our sincerest condolences uh, to the uh, victims and um, everyone involved in these, uh, these tragedies. So um, our thoughts and prayers are with the families and everyone that was injured um, through these events. I will provide you with uh, further details of a um, violent crime spree that occurred yesterday afternoon that ultimately resulted in three stabbings, two vehicular homicides, and other multiple felonies, including a third homicide in the city of Milpitas. I'd like to thank Mayor Mahan, Councilmember uh, Pam Foley, Councilmember Omar Torres, as well as, as well as Chief Jared Hernandez from the Milpitas Police Department for being here today. The facts and information you are here today is based on a preliminary investigation that we're conducting. As our investigation progresses, new details and information may come to light and our media relations staff will update you as necessary. We believe that the suspect we have in custody is the sole suspect responsible for the violent crime that occurred yesterday. This suspect was known to the San Jose Police Department and has several felony and misdemeanor convictions. The suspect was also on active probation out of Santa Clara County. During the course of our investigation, we were made aware of a homicide that occurred in the city of Milpitas. The Milpitas Police Department confirmed that they had located the carjacked vehicle that was taken in San Jose and used by the suspect during his crime spree in San Jose. Our patrol commanders sent officers to Milpitas to assist with locating and taking the suspect into custody and did so without incident. The suspect is currently in custody at the Santa Clara County Jail and is charged with multiple counts of homicide, attempted homicide, and carjacking. Once again, the men and women of the San Jose Police Department performed without hesitation to protect our community. I'm extremely proud of everyone's efforts yesterday, as well as the many residents who came forward to assist us with their witness statements, their images, and videos to help solve this case. It was truly a collaborative effort between public safety and the community. And thanks to the swift actions of the officers of the San Jose Police Department, as well as the Malpitas Police Department, this violent suspect was taken into custody, ending the possibility of further bloodshed. I will now pass it on to uh, Deputy Chief Steve Lagorio for a specific timeline of events and our patrol response. Good afternoon, I am uh, Deputy Chief Steve Ligorio, San Jose Police Department Bureau of Investigations. I'll provide you with a timeline uh, of events that occurred yesterday. All times are approximate. 3.11 p.m., officers responded to a stabbing and carjacking near Coozer and Delwood in South San Jose. An adult male victim was stabbed with life-threatening injuries, but was later stabilized. The suspect Left, the victims, uh, left in the victim's tan Honda minivan. At 3.31 p.m., officers responded to a stabbing and carjacking in the parking lot at 1800 Hillsdale Avenue. The suspect stabbed the victim, carjacked him, then used his burgundy Honda, Honda Pilot SUV uh, to strike a pedestrian in the parking lot. The stabbing victim had life-threatening injuries but was stabilized. The pedestrian has been stabilized with non-life-threatening injuries. At 4 p.m., officers responded to a stabbing at 4th Street and St. John, downtown San Jose. That event actually occurred at 10th and Santa Clara. The victim suffered non-life-threatening injuries after the suspect struck his vehicle, then stabbed him. At 4.12 p.m., Officers responded to 16th and Santa Clara for a collision involving a vehicle versus three pedestrians. 
The vehicle matched the description of the carjacked vehicle. A preliminary investigation revealed that the suspect intentionally struck the victims. Two victims died at the scene. Shortly after that, the suspect struck a person who was on a motorized scooter in the area of 2200 Alum Rock. At 4.32 p.m., the Milpitas Police Department responded to a stabbing in the 400 block of Jacklin Road. The suspect's vehicle was also abandoned, uh, located abandoned in that area. San Jose Police uh, Patrol units responded to assist Milpitas. And now I'm going to turn it over to Chief Hernandez to give a uh, chain of events in Milpitas. Thank you all for being here with us on this uh, Friday afternoon. My name is Jared Hernandez. I'm currently serving as the Chief of Police in the City of Milpitas. Before I speak about the timeline of events that occurred yesterday, I do want to take a moment uh, to echo Chief Mata's condolences as well uh, for the families and the friends of the victims. Um, when senseless acts of, of random violence happen and tragedies like this uh, that we witnessed yesterday uh, occur, it affects all of us as individuals and as communities, and it affects us as responders to these types of incidents. So yesterday at about 4.30 in the afternoon, the Milpitas Police Department's Communications Center received a 911 call about a stabbing that had occurred at the Spartan Final parking lot on the 400 block of Jacklin Road. Numerous officers arrived on scene within a minute of the event, and the suspect had already left uh, the scene. <clears throat> officers that arrived immediately began rendering first aid to the victim. It was a single victim, a 27-year-old male resident of the city of Milpitas and they began CPR. While officers were tending to the victims, other officers began gathering information, uh, trying to search video. And officers from the San Jose Police Department also arrived at our scene and we learned that the uh, suspect that we were seeking was likely involved in the violent acts that happened in the city of San Jose earlier. Our, de our departments began working collaboratively in an attempt to identify the suspect and take him into custody as quickly as possible. While this was happening, fire department personnel and paramedics arrived on scene, took over medical aid, and transported our victim to the hospital where he was pronounced deceased at 5.06 p.m. Simultaneously, while our event was occurring in the city of Milpitas, a graduation ceremony was taking place at the Milpitas High School, which is less than 100 yards away. So securing the area, ensuring the safety of the attendees at that graduation became a priority for us. We moved officers uh, to perimeter positions to ensure people inside the venue were protected, and we placed plainclothes detectives inside of that ceremony. We could not have done that without the assistance of the San Jose Police Department, and because of that collaborative effort, we were able to maintain uh, community safety. As Chief Mata uh, had mentioned, the suspect vehicle was located in the city of Milpitas at the shopping center. We believe that the suspect was still in the area as a result of a canine track. So thank you to the uh, canine team that gave us that information. With the assistance of the San Jose Police Department's air unit overhead, Milpitas police officers and San Jose police officers canvassed the area for the suspect in a coordinated and collaborative effort to bring him into custody. At about 6.15 p.m., the suspect emerged from a parked vehicle and our officers took him into custody on Arizona Avenue, less than a quarter mile from our stabbing scene. Currently, detectives from the Milpitas Police Department and the San Jose Police Department continue to work collaboratively as we try to piece together the events of what happened yesterday and identify a motive behind the person's actions. I want to thank our dispatchers, our officers, and our detectives for the quick response, as well as the San Jose Police Department for the collaboration and the support. I believe that the quick actions of our dispatchers in taking the information from the 911 call coupled with their quick dispatching of the incident and the rapid response of our officers from both the Milpitas Police Department and the San Jose Police Department. We ended the crime spree. We were able to effectively prevent additional people from being injured and ultimately take a suspect into custody. Thank you. We're gonna have uh, Mayor Matt Mahan come up and say a couple words. Good afternoon. First, on behalf of a shocked and saddened city, I want to express my deepest condolences to the families of the victims of this senseless violence we witnessed 
yesterday. I'm heartbroken by what took place in our city. There are really no words. CBS. There you go. There we go. Um, There are no words that can convey the depth of our sorrow to the families of the victims. San Jose mourns with you. And I know my colleagues here today, council members Pam Foley and Omar Torres, share that devastation and are fielding a lot of very tough questions from neighbors today. I want to thank the brave women and men of the San Jose and Milpitas Police Departments for their urgent action that saved further catastrophe, prevented further catastrophe. So as you heard from both our chief and Milpitas chief, our departments are still doing a lot of work to track down every detail and better understand what happened. And we'll clearly learn much more in the days ahead. But in the meantime, we will stand together and grieve as one city. I think this awful incident just shows how much more work we have to do to make sure our cities are safe. Far too many people in our region and our city do not feel sufficiently safe. It's why I want to double the rate at which we hire police officers. And it's why I believe that when we're dealing with individuals who are repeat offenders with multiple convictions, our city, county, and state must do a better job of holding people accountable for getting the care that they need or getting them off of our streets. So once again, I want to express my deepest condolences to the victims' families. I want to really thank everyone in the San Jose and Milpitas Police Departments for their swift action that surely saved additional lives. And I know we'll be learning much more in the days ahead, and we'll continue to keep you all updated. Thank you. I just want to reiterate that a lot of the information that we shared is what we know at this moment. So there's a lot of information that we don't have, but I'm sure a lot of you have questions. So Chief Motto is going to come up and answer some of those questions. If you can direct most of those questions toward the San Jose investigation, if after you have a couple of questions, I believe uh, Chief uh, for Milpitas will answer a few of those as well so that we're not going back and forth. All right, Chief Motto. His criminal rap sheet is uh, long. Uh, should he have not been on the street? He has uh, several felony and misdemeanor convictions um, spanning over several years. Um, again, we're just one part of the criminal justice system, right? We're the gatekeepers. We have the county that's involved, as you heard, our mayor, right? That involves, right, the jails, probation. <clears throat> Right, the DA's office and, and public defender's office, and then we have the judiciary. Um, so, I mean, we have to look at, you know, given his history, where the system um, failed, uh, if if that, that were the case. But we have to look at each each individual uh, uh, crime that he was convicted of to figure out what what, what happened, uh, and that's something that we're working with the district attorney's office to to figure out. The court also provided some mental health uh, assistance, if you will, uh, to him in the past. Could his mental health have been a motive? We're looking at not only the mental health, substance abuse, again, his uh, prior uh, history to see what uh, the motive was. We didn't, um, again, this is still an investigation. We're going to be working uh, with district, uh, district attorney's office to determine what the motive was, taking all that into consideration. Was he under the influence of drugs or alcohol? Uh, we, we don't know that. We'll uh, probably get the results later on. So are you saying the system failed by uh, him being on the streets? Is that what you were talking about that? You were like, the system failed. What do you mean by that? What I meant is that we're one part of the system. We have to see where the system failed this individual. Right? And say that, yeah, the system failed. We have to f figure out what, what happened to him given um, you know, his, um, his prior uh, criminal convictions. Is there any commonality among the people who were attacked? No, uh, it was just, just random, random attacks. Uh, like was mentioned, 
senseless acts that uh, this individual committed. Same night used in these cases, no? Uh, that's something uh, we believe so, but that's something we're going to look, look into as well. To see if he had any other weapons as well. So some of the pedestrians who've been identified had mentioned that those Deputy Chief had said that they were intentionally hit. Was that the case with the one in Hillsdale and then the person on the motorized scooter, or was that just kind of they were in the way and just trying to get away or do whatever you do with the car? Uh, we we believe that these were intentional. They were all intentional acts, uh, both uh, the carjackings and the uh, the vehicle collisions. That's, that's what we know at the time. Again, just, just random acts of violence. Uh, there was no targeting of individuals. Um, again, just random. Um, and then he committed the crimes. Chief, is the scooter incident, is that in addition to what we knew last night, or is that known last night? Um, again, as was mentioned, uh, all this information is still coming in. Uh, that's why we urge our community, if uh, they heard or saw, some, or saw something uh, last night or were a victim of this individual's um, actions, we want them to come forward. Yes, we're, we're learning uh, new things as, as this investigation continues. And he got out of a vehicle when he was apprehended. Was that a different vehicle than, I mean, was it another vehicle that he had broken into? Do we know the state of that vehicle? Uh, I think we mentioned that it was the same vehicle that was taken to San Jose uh, and that was recovered uh, in Milpitas. So we have that vehicle. Let me try to go ahead and move over to Milpitas. If anybody has any Milpitas specific questions, Chief Fernandez, if you could reiterate what you have to do at the Milpitas High again. Um. Certainly. So while our while we were investigating our, our stabbing at the time, it was a stabbing. We we weren't aware of the victim's condition at that time. There was a graduation occurring at the local high school, and so we had the tough choice: do we um, do we end the, the ceremony? which could create uh, additional issues, um, or do we provide some type of site security the best that we can? So we elected to provide site security, so that way we knew where all the pedestrians were. We thought that that was the best approach to promoting public safety. So we brought in additional officers to uh, basically surround the ceremony, and then we put plainclothes detectives on the ground inside of the ceremony. Um, at that time, we had a photo so we knew who we were looking for, at least we didn't know the identity, but we knew what they looked like. So we thought that was the best approach. So the attendants had no idea what was going on? They, I'm sure that there was a little bit of angst because there was a helicopter flying above, um, but there was not any outwardly um, facing information at that time. We were still new into the investigation, still learning that what we were dealing with may have been related to what San Jose was dealing with. It would have been premature to, to send that out that time. Chief, you said that the, the suspect exited a vehicle. Did he surrender to you, or did you recognize him and take him into custody? So he came out of a out of a vehicle and moved up the street, and we had received information either through an officer or a, a witness. I'm uncertain at this time um, that the person was walking down the street. And when officers, um, I guess I would describe it as a uh, overwhelming show of force with multiple bodies there, uh, he just basically surrendered. How long uh, was he, um, how long did you guys not know where he was? So I think there, there's maybe like a couple hours where he was sitting in his car. Or when did you guys find him? How long was he sitting in his car at that point? So our original call for service was about 4.30 in the afternoon, and he was taken into custody, I believe, at 6.15 p.m. Did you recover any weapons in that? A weapon was recovered. 